Yeah, the Student Media Grants Program is one of the more exciting things that we do because it gives us a chance to interact with students worldwide. The applicants for this program come from many different countries as well as many different universities in the U.S. Uh, the program was started, of course, by uh, Mr. Howard Buffett, who regards himself as a photojournalist, uh, as well as a farmer and a philanthropist. But he believed very strongly that it was important to get young people engaged at a very early part of their career in photojournalism uh, related to conflict and development because that would help frame their careers and make sure that they continue to make contributions in this area. I've been very pleased by the response that we've gotten from the students. A very high quality proposal that we've received. It makes it very difficult to uh, select from among them. We are indebted to faculty at a &M who help us review all of these proposals and select uh, those that we think are going to be the path-breaking work in conflict and development in photojournalism. Today is the third anniversary of the beginning of the conflict and develop of the uh, Student Media Grants Program in Condev. It was three years ago that Mr. Howard Buffett was here in the same uh, visitor center to announce the, uh, the uh, grant to Texas A&M of half a million dollars. It's an endowment that supports the Student Media Grants Program. So today, we, third anniversary, we are celebrating the work of those awardees from 2013. They did their work in 2014, so now in 2015 we're able to celebrate their accomplishments. Also today, we announced the awardees for 2014 who are going to be doing their work this year, and so it'll be next March. They will at a similar event, presumably here at the Visitor Center. We will show the work of five new awardees um, in the, uh, for the photojournalism award. So it's a growing program, actually, in that uh, we've, had, uh, we've had a total of five awardees up until now, and next year we will have a total of five presenting. So uh, it's doubled in size over the last couple of years. All right, hi, my name is Mike Petrello. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism Science here at a and And here I'm presenting some photos from my research this summer in Nicaragua. And for my project, I was studying natural resource conflicts and local knowledge in tropical dry forest communities in southwestern Nicaragua. And my project involved a combination of participant photography, ethnography, which means that I basically lived in the community for a period of three months to help my, help interpret these issues through a culturally situated viewpoint. And then also um, interviews as well to help understand the words behind these photos, not just my own interpretation of how people are placing these in their center of their lives. So here we see one of the many uh, conflict themes that emerged from, one of seven, in fact, conflict themes that emerged from this summer. And this is the most pervasive theme, which was drought. And in southwestern Nicaragua, drought is a seriously important issue because it, number one, controls the fertility and abundance of crops, such as rice and beans and carrots and yucca. In, in that region, and two, because it's limiting the, re the availability of drinking water in that region as well. So it has a direct impact on both the food, that's food availability, and the uh, ability to bathe and, um, I guess, for drinking water as well. So this grant was, this project was funded by the, the Conflict and Development Center, uh, here at A&M, uh, which is supported through the Howard G. Buffett Foundation on Conflict and Development. And this is through the Student Media Grants Program here at A&M. And the, the, pro the program is devoted to uh, students and researchers who are going to use media, form any form of media, to document conflict and development in fragile nations. And so, so my project fit into that spectrum because of the high level of poverty in Nicaragua and the, the, the unparalleled dependence on agricultural resources in this region, and also because of the conflict that 
both of those aspects of their daily lives created for them. So um, I highly recommend it. It was a really, really amazing opportunity and they basically gave me a chance of a lifetime to head down there and spend three months learning about the issues affecting El Carmen and southwestern Nicaragua and also to learn a, a lot about myself in the process. My name is Ryan Brogandu, I'm from Michigan State University and the title of my project is uh, Profiling Chronic Household Food Security. My project um, looks at food security but um, I could say that the kind of central theme is uh, what I call value chain coordination and um, what I look at are the problems that, the problems in Malian agricultural value chains that uh, constrain coordination um, or ec forms of economic conflict. Um, so I look at the different kinds of conflict within that, that kind of encumber trade and value chains and then also the strategies that value chain actors use to overcome those conflicts. So the, some of the findings are, um, I guess kind of the point of the, of the research was to identify the, the innovative strategies that uh, these Malian value chain actors are using to coordinate better, to overcome conflict. And so um, some of the, the research is kind of still in process, but some of the broader findings, the preliminary findings, I guess I can say is just, one is the centrality of uh, farmer organizations. In, um, in facilitating the different kind of coordination required in, in serial value chains in Mali. Um, another is the, um, the importance also of the involvement of downstream buyers of commodities. Um, and also uh, the importance of uh, inputs and that there be coordination between buyers and farmers and input providers also is, is also kind of a broader finding that I've had.